In this video, we will present some problems in partial differentiation. Let's look at this problem. If z equals f of x plus ay plus g of x minus ay, show that this equality holds. To make things simpler, we let x plus ay equal to u. And x minus a y equal to v. Let's evaluate some partial derivatives of u and v first. We start with partial u partial x. This is the partial derivative of x plus a y with respect to x, which is 1. Partial u partial y is the partial derivative of x plus a y with respect to y, which is a. Similarly, we find that partial v partial x is 1, and partial v partial y is negative a. Now, in order to show the equality, we need to first find the first partial derivatives, partial z partial y, or partial z partial x. Let's find partial z partial x first. We need to apply the chain rule in partial differentiation. We can use the tree diagram to help us. Partial z partial x goes through this path and this path. Therefore, we have partial z partial u times partial u partial x plus partial z partial v times partial v partial x. Looking at the original expression of z, we find that f of u is only an expression with a variable u. So differentiating z with respect to u, we get f prime u. Partial u partial x from the previous computation is 1. Partial z partial v from the expression g of v is the only expression with the variable v. So partial z partial v is g prime v times partial v partial x, which from the previous computation is equal to 1. Next, the second derivative of z with respect to x. This is partial derivative of f prime u plus g prime v. Differentiating f prime u with respect to x, we get f prime prime u partial u partial x plus g prime prime v partial v partial x. This simplifies to partial u partial x, which is 1, and g prime prime v times partial v partial x, which is 1 as well. Next, we find partial z partial y and partial square z partial y squared in similar fashion. We just need to replace all the x terms in the previous computation to y. So partial z partial y becomes or which is the same as this portion times partial u partial y which from the above is a and partial z partial v is the same as this portion times negative a from the result here. Next, we differentiate the above expression with respect to y. So we have f prime prime u times partial u partial y, which is a 
So a times a is a squared. Differentiating g prime v, we have g prime prime v times partial v partial y, which is negative a times a, which is negative a squared. Factorizing out the a squared, we get this. Thus, we have proven that this equals partial x squared. In this section, we consider relative maximum and minimum points, or relative extrema, as well as certain points for three-dimensional surfaces. The first theorem we look at is a zero derivatives condition. It says that given that the partial derivatives exist, and if f has a relative extremum or settle point at x naught y naught, then the partial derivatives equals zero. In other words, to find a relative extremum or settle point, we solve these two equations for the coordinate pair x and y. In the previous theorem, critical points were found when partial f partial x and partial f partial y were set to zero. In this second partials test, we test these critical points using the discriminant of f, df where df is given by this formula. These are the assumptions. The partial derivatives exist on the domain S. The mixed partials fxy equals fyx. And thirdly, f as a critical point at x0, y0. With these three assumptions, we make some statements about d. Firstly, if d is less than 0, then f has a saddle point at the point x0, y0. If d is greater than 0, then there are two possibilities. Either f x x x0, y0 is greater than 0, or this condition holds, then f has a relative minimum point f x0, y0. Thirdly, the other possibility is fxx x0 y0 is negative or fyy x0 y0 is negative then f has a relative maximum point at x0 y0 fourthly it's also possible that df is equal to 0 in this case the test is inconclusive We will show two examples how to find relative extrema and saddle points when the discriminant d equals zero. The approach is to observe the behavior of the function and make some conclusions. In this example, recall that the zero derivative condition requires partial f partial x and partial f partial y equal to zero. Once we found the critical points from the above, we substitute this into the discriminant and from the sign of the discriminant, whether positive, negative or zero, we can make some conclusions about the critical points. First we find partial f partial x, which is 2xy power 4. And partial f partial y is 4x squared y cubed. Therefore setting these to zero, we get x equals to zero or y equals to 0, or both, meaning we have the points 0, t, or t, 0, for all real values of t. Next, to find d, 2y power 4, 12x squared, y squared, minus 8xy cubed, squared. 
which gives negative 40 x squared y power 6 after simplifying. Notice that the discriminant at the critical points are 0. So the second partial test is inconclusive. However, we notice that fxy is positive for all x and y non-zero. Therefore, we conclude that all the critical points we found are actually minimum points. In this second example, again we apply the zero derivative condition to find critical points first. So critical points are where x is zero or y is zero or both. So the critical points are zero t or t zero for all real values of t. We then find the discriminant of f. This is 2y cubed times 6x squared y minus 6xy squared squared. Simplifying, we get negative 24x squared y power 4. Substituting the critical points into D, we find that it is zero. Therefore, again, the second partial test is inconclusive. By observing the function f, we notice that the size of f is determined by y cubed. Meaning, when y is positive, f is positive. And when y is negative, f is negative. If we consider the x, y axes, then in the positive regions of y, f is positive, and in the negative regions of y, f is negative. And along the x axis and y axis, f is zero. Therefore, we can make this conclusion. T00 are settled points for all real values of T, meaning that all the points along X axis, including the origin, are settled points. Recall that the definition of a settled point is such that every open disk centered at that point contains points that satisfies F positive as well as F negative. The second conclusion we make is that 0, t0 are relative maximum points for t less than 0. We can have the third conclusion as well.